In the news this morning, fashion designer Donna Karen. Have you heard about this story yet? Just let me see a show of hands if you heard about the story. Okay, just a few people. Pay attention, okay? Donna Karen, in the wake of the disturbing allegations about famed movie producer Harvey Weinstein allegedly harassing several women, used the power of her voice to attack women. In an interview with TheDailyMail.com on the red carpet Sunday night, Karen was asked about Harvey Weinstein, who she described as a wonderful person. And then she went on to raise what she apparently considers to be the burning question here. Are women who are getting harassed, quote, asking for it? Watch this. Watch. How do we display ourselves? How do we present ourselves as women? What are we asking? Are we asking for it? You know, by presenting all the sensuality and all the sexuality. It's not Harvey Weinstein. You look at everything all over the world today, you know, and how women are dressing and, you know, what they're asking by just presenting themselves the way they do. What are they asking for? Trouble. Trouble? Just yesterday on the program, we had reporter Lauren Savan a broadcast journalist who said she met Mr. Weinstein at a restaurant 10 years ago, and she alleges that he cornered her in a vestibule there, tried to kiss her, was rejected, and then? I had no idea what was going to happen, and, and it, it happened very quickly, and what? he immediately um, exposed himself and, you know, began pleasuring himself, and I just stood there dumbfounded. And also, there's that feeling that I'm sure so many women feel of shame, of perhaps I did something to give him the wrong impression. Maybe I was flirty or maybe I gave him the wrong impression and that's why this happened. Weirdly, I never thought to ask Lauren whether her skirt brought on that vestibule incident because her outfit is totally irrelevant and most rational people know that. Today, Ms. Karen is trying to walk back her comments, releasing a statement in part reading, my statements were taken out of context and do not represent how I feel about the current situation concerning Harvey Weinstein. I believe that sexual harassment is not acceptable and this is an issue that must be addressed once and for all, regardless of the individual. So they don't represent how she feels or what she believes. And she says she was taken out of context. Really? It's not Harvey Weinstein. You look at everything all over the world today, you know, and how women are dressing and, you know, what they're asking by just presenting themselves the way they do. What are they asking for? Trouble. Unfortunately, she is not the only one who apparently thinks this way, and it is wrong. It's seriously wrong. Let's be perfectly clear right now. Women sometimes make bad fashion choices, including at the office. <laughs> this does not invite their own harassment, period. Yeah. End of report. There are laws in this country, laws. I don't give a damn if a woman shows up in a bikini to the office. That doesn't invite or make it okay for her superior to harass her. It makes it okay for her boss to say, go home and change. That's it. The truth is, sexual harassment has nothing to do with wardrobe. It has to do with power and control and sexual proclivities that a superior chooses not to rein in. How insulting, by the way, to men as well. Like, they are a bunch of animals who cannot behave themselves if a woman shows part of her thigh, right? This attitude of blaming women for their own harassment is actually one of the reasons why women choose not to come forward after they get harassed, because they fear victim shaming. They fear it. They know it's going to happen. How about we not pile on, Donna? How about we use this moment to encourage women to find their own voices, despite the risks, and to stand up for themselves, which is hard enough without rich, powerful, well-connected fashion moguls lecturing them on their clothing choices. And speaking of fashion choices, here's one for you. I'm done with Donna Karen. All right. Thank you for listening, for hearing me out. Had to get that off my chest. I feel better. I want her to come on. I want her to come on. I want her to come on right here, especially after I just said what I said, and we can have an honest discussion about how she really feels, right? Let's, let's yes. talk about it. If she's really sorry, if she really was taken out of context, if she really doesn't believe that way, explain those comments. Let's talk about it, because the messaging to women is all wrong. Okay.
Moving on to other stories in the news today. Have you heard about this dust up between our actual first lady and the first Mrs. Trump? <laughs> Have you heard about this? It started as Ivana Trump, not Ivanka. Ivanka's the daughter. Ivana is Donald Trump's first wife. Was doing interviews this week to promote her new book. And in particular, it was something she said that seemed to get under the skin of someone at the White House. How often do you two talk? Talk about once a 14 days. But I have the direct number to White House, but I don't really want to call him there because Melania is there, and I don't want to cause any kind of jealousy or something like that because I'm basically first Trump wife, okay? <laughs> I'm first lady, okay? <laughs> I'm first lady, she said. So for more on this, we are joined by my NBC News colleague, Katie Turr, who got to know the Trump camp very well during the campaign, and she writes all about it in her new New York Times bestseller, Unbelievable, my front row seat to the craziest campaign in American history. Come on out, Katie. <laughs> that did not go over well. No. At the White didn't. House, the, uh, the First Lady's communications director issued a statement that uh, goes on and on, but it reads in part, there's clearly no substance to this statement from an ex. This is unfortunately only attention-seeking and self-serving noise. It seems odd because that's a very serious statement what, for what felt like a, a pretty lighthearted quip. Um, but you have to remember, Melania is in a, a, a totally unique situation. No other first lady has had an ex-wife for the president is to deal true? with. This is the first divorced this is, president? I, I believe the first that. divorced president. She's not only, she's the first lady, but she's also the third wife, and she's the second stepmom to Donald Trump's very high-profile children, one of whom is in the White House. So I, I called a few of my sources to find out what precipitated this and why such a strong response. Because Melania never speaks, I and mean, she doesn't really come she, out with provocative statements. She ever. doesn't come out. She doesn't make waves. She's been behind the scenes. She hasn't liked the attention right. uh, that's come along with, with her husband's campaign and now his presidency. Um, she never planned for it. But they said that this is these are long simmering tensions mm -hmm. that go well beyond what um, Ivana may have said in the interview. Um, there may be some discomfort there with having her be in a high, more high profile moment at the uh, with these interviews that she's doing in association with the book. But this is this is tension that's been there for for the a while thing that longer. I found irritating in in Ivana's statement wasn't even the I am really first lady, which is clearly a joke. But the I don't want to. I don't involve Melania, I don't tell Melania I don't call too often because I don't want to make her jealous, right? I mean, how annoying would that be as the, like, the, to suggest that that's possible? Yeah. Suggest there's, some, there's a fracture in your relationship. Well, I mean, listen, Ivana had a very high profile humiliation when he left her for Marla Maples and it was splashed all over the tabloids. And um, she has had to combat that for, for quite a while and hold her own in this world that people want to say was entirely created by Donald Trump. When she says, hey, look, I, I, I ran a business. I raised these kids. She's I've like, I raised them. She's exactly. like, Donald doesn't deserve them. all that credit. I raised them. She did say that. She said she was, uh, he, he basically didn't talk to them until they were 18. Now, my good producers are reminding me that Ronald Reagan, the Gipper, was a divorced president. Ah, yes. How can we forget darn. the great communicator? T Katie, great to see you. You too. Good luck with the book. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.